Hello mom, it's your baby boy. Let's write some code. SVGs are great because they're drawings you can build with HTML, which means you can manipulate and animate your drawings just like you would with any other HTML. So to create an SVG, we're gonna use the SVG tag. And then we'll close that off. Now everything in between this is gonna be our drawing. Now let's add a border around that SVG so we can see our beautiful canvas here that we're working with. And so if we wanted to draw a rectangle, we can use a tag called rect. And we can specify the width that we want to draw, so we'll say 30, and the height. So we'll say we want a rectangle by 30 by 30. And as you can see there in our top left-hand corner, we get a black rectangle, 30 by 30. And so if we want to move it around the, the canvas, we can supply an x coordinate. So we'll say x, move it 50 pixels, and then y, we'll just move it 50 more pixels. And now you can see it's down, 50 and left 50. Now black squares are great, but what if I want to change that color? What if I want to fill it with a different color? I'm going to use the attribute fill, and I'm going to fill it with a different color, such as red. Red's a, a nice color, and it's only three letters. But what if instead I didn't want to fill the color, I, instead I wanted to draw a line around my box with the red color. So we don't want to fill it, so I'm going to say fill equals none, and fill it with nothing. And then instead, what I'm going to write is stroke equals red to stroke a red line around our rectangle. All right, that's looking good. But now what if I change the width of our SVG here? Say width equals 400 and change the width. You notice that it, it gets bigger, um, but the square, our little red square, stays in the same spot, which is uh, 50 pixels from the top and 50 pixels from the left. Uh, and it's also still 30 by 30 um, wide. What if I wanted it to actually scale with the dimensions of our SVG? I mean, that's what SVG stands for, uh, Scalable Vector Graphics. And that's one of the best part of them is that we can make its, all our shapes and, and everything inside it to automatically scale um, with the size uh, of our SVG. So to do that, we need to tell our SVG what these numbers mean. What does 30 mean? What does 50 mean? And so what we're gonna use is we're gonna use an attribute called ViewBox. And this takes four numbers. The first two numbers are the starting location of the X and the Y coordinates. Um, I almost always start those at zero because uh, it just kind of makes things easier and, and just kind of makes sense. So I recommend you doing that too. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is we need to specify what, at what value is this far right hand corner? What, what value does the X far, you know, hit this farthest edge here? Uh, and so a nice way to do it is just say 100. So um, that would mean that this box here uh, means the, the X coordinate means it's halfway across our SVG. Um, and then the fourth number is what, what do we consider this bottom um, number to be? Like if, if something's all the way down at the bottom, what, what number is that? And I'm just going to set that to 100 too. So that means here our square, if we save it, it's going to be moving down uh, halfway into our SVG and, um, and moving over um, halfway. So just to drive that home a little bit more, I'm going to change the X and the Y to zero. So it starts up in the top left um, corner. And then as you can see, it's now one third of the way across the SVG because it's 30 of 100. Um, so if I change this to 50, it's going to be exactly halfway across our SVG. But now if I change this to 50 here, our view box, to now say that the far edge is 50 and the bottom edge is 50 and save that, you'll notice that it fills the entire SVG because now 50 height and 50 width means go the entire distance of our SVG. And the reason why this is great is that we can now go here and change our width to any size and our drawing will scale to whatever that size is. Now you can draw all kinds of shapes. You can draw rectangles, circles, ellipses, lines, polygons, but my favorite, favorite, favorite is path. So we're gonna use the path tag here. And with path, we can specify an attribute called D. And you give it line commands. You can think of this as like a pen, where you're putting a, piece, a pen down onto a piece of paper, and then you tell it where to move that pen, whether to go down here or there to draw a line or pick up the pen and move it to this location, and then put it down again and start drawing the line again. We're gonna give it a letter, and then we're gonna give it a coordinate. So I'm gonna use the letter M to mean move, to this X coordinate and this Y coordinate. I wanna to move to the top left corner here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say draw a line 50 to in the X coordinate 
and zero in the y coordinate. So it will be the, uh, the top right corner. And then we're going to draw another line, but this time we're going to go down to the bottom corner. So we'll say 50x and 50y. And then we're going to draw back over to the, the left hand corner. So we're going to say zero on the x coordinate and 50 on the y coordinate. And then finally, we're going to draw it all the way back to the top left corner. So we'll say zero, zero and save that. And as you notice, we get that same square that fills up the entire region. So now I think this square is a little too big. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the coordinates to make it only go uh, a 30 by 30 square instead. And so to do that, I can go back here to this uh, type right corner and move that to 30, 0, and this to 30, 30, and then the uh, bottom left corner to 30. And then now we get that, uh, that's, that same square, but 30 by 30 up in the top left corner. So let's say we want to move our box over 20 by 20 um, and, and see what it looks like. And you notice that um, it's getting kind of messed up. We're about a fifth way down the box and a fifth way over. And that's where it's telling it to start. It's starting at 20, 20. And then what we're doing is we're saying, okay, now go up to x30 and 0 and, and draw a line to that coordinate. Uh, so it doesn't actually move our box. It kind of just makes, messes it up. But luckily, there's another way to do it. If you notice that I'm using capital letters here, um, this means where you want to use absolute coordinates. Um, so instead, we can use lowercase letters, and then we can use um, relative units. So instead of doing it this way, I'm going to copy this and create a new path here. Um, and we are going to start at 0 and 0. And let's just add some color here. So we'll say stroke red and fill equals none, just so we can see the line that we're drawing. All right, so our pen right now is at 0, 0, and we are going to draw a line uh, 30 in the x direction and 0 in the y direction. And you can see it makes a line uh, that goes uh, 30. And then now we want to draw a line down. So we'll say uh, we want to go 0 in the x direction, and then <clears throat> we want to go 30 in the uh, y direction to draw a line down. Um, but now we need to go the other way in the x direction. So we'll say we're going to draw a line negative 30. So that's going to go to the left in the x direction. And then we're going to do nothing in the y direction to draw a line back. And then finally, to complete our box, we need to go negative or sorry, 0 in the x direction and negative 30 in the y direction to draw back up to 0, 0. So now when we want to move this box, all we have to do is change that first starting point and our box will move. And since we're using relative coordinates, it will still draw that 30 by 30 box. But we can simplify this further, seeing that some of our line commands were only drawing in one, uh, in one coordinate and it's zero for a lot of these coordinates. It'd be different if we're drawing lines at, uh, you know, multiple angle, angles at a time. But since we're only drawing, uh, boxes at these right angles, uh, we can simplify this. And so since this is only going in uh, the x direction or horizontal, instead of drawing a line, we're going to use the letter H. And we can remove that y direction. And so now this is going to draw a horizontal line 30 pixels from where the pen is. And then what we want to do is we want to draw a vertical line 30 pixels from where that pen is. And then once again, we'll draw a horizontal line negative 30, not pixels, uh, 30 units uh, on the horizontal and then the last one we want to draw a vertical line negative or up uh, on the Y and you see we still get the same uh, box. Now we can simplify this even further by using uh, the close path command or the letter Z. So if you have a box here so we're starting at 10 and we are going horizontal 30, vertical down, uh, then back left um, we can already tell it to close the box without giving it this last one just by saying Z. And this just means close up that path. Um, there's no need to draw that last bit. And so if you save it here without the Z, you can see that it doesn't close the path. It still it leaves the pen at that, that coordinate. But if we say Z, then we're going to close that path and it'll automatically draw the line back up to where we started. So now that we know how to draw lines pretty good, creating something like a loading bar um, is pretty easy. So I'm going to change my view box here to be uh, 100 by 100 again because I want the far um, side to be 100 because that will make it really easy uh, when giving it percents um, by having it 100. And so now what we're going to do is I'm going to create a, a path and this will be my loading bar. So let's say path. Uh, we'll give it an ID and let's call it percent so we can target it with some JavaScript. And we're not going to use the fill. What Instead what we're going to use is the stroke. And I'll just say uh, red. We'll have a red loading bar. Great, so let's go ahead and create a script tag here. 
and target this uh, box with, or target this uh, element. So we'll say element equals document, document, get element by ID, and it is percent. And then we need to keep track of our percent. So we'll say percents, and we'll start it at zero. And we're just going to create a loop here or a, an interval that we'll call this every second, every second. And what this will do is increase our percent uh, by 10 uh, just to simulate some kind of loading progress. So now on our elements, we want to set the attribute, set the D attribute here. And we can uh, set it every time that it updates this percent. Um, we want to start it at zero uh, and let's just start it at 10 and then we want to move in the horizontal direction uh, and we can just move in the horizontal direction to our percent and now as you can see here over time uh, our loading bar progresses uh, further and further to a hundred percent or even further but you know the far right is a hundred because our view box says a hundred so that's as far as it's gonna go visually now even more fun than loading bars is bar charts. Everybody loves bar charts. So I'm going to remove everything from here and comment this stuff out. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a, we're going to target our SVG. So we'll say document query selector. And since we only have one SVG, I can do it the lazy way and grab my SVG here. Um, and then what I want to do is let's say I have some data, um, just some random uh, numbers here, I don't know, 20, 60. And I want to plot this data in my SVG. So I can loop through it. So I'll say data for each function. Um, and we'll say number and index. Um, so this will be each the number of the data and the index of where we are. So what we need to do is we need to create a bar for each one of these. So we'll say bar document create element. Now I'm going to do something different. So SVGs have namespaces. And so if you want to create an element that goes into an SVG, you have to say create element in S, and then you have to give it the namespace, which is just happens to be this URL here. So www3, not that, w3.org slash uh, 2000 um, SVG. And then we're going to give it the tag name. So we're going to use a path because we're going to add some paths. So now that we have this path element, we can set the attribute. So we'll say bar set attribute, and we're going to set the D attribute. Um, and what we're going to do is first we're going to start it off at the zero direction X. And then what we want to do is we want to space these evenly um, down our, um, our SVG. So what we'll do is we'll take the index here and we'll times it by 10. And I'm just going to plus 10 to start it start the first one down, um, down 10. Um, and then we're going to draw a line relative uh, to the amount of the number uh, that's in this array here. Um, and then what we can do is just uh, put a zero and close that off there. So now what we can do is add these bars to our SVG by saying append child and append these bars here. Now to have them display, we need to give them a little bit of a, a little bit of style. We need to set their um, their stroke and the stroke width. So we'll say bar style uh, stroke, and this will be the color. So we'll just use black uh, bar style and then stroke width. Um, and we'll just set this to five. And there you have it. We have a nice little bar chart. So once you have a bar chart, you're going to start to want to move it around. And so to do that, we, we need to group all of our bars. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tag that's called a G tag. I'm going to give an ID of chart here and close that tag up. And I'm going to append all of my, um, all my bars to this ID instead. So here I can say uh, chart equals document uh, query selector, why not? Um, and we'll say chart to get our chart here. And instead of appending it to the SVG, we're going to append it to here. But so it's visually it looks the exact same except now all of our elements are under uh, this G tag or grouped in this. So what we can do with this group is we can now apply these instead of individually applying these uh, stroke and stroke width we can apply it to all our bars uh, by applying it up here. So we can say uh, stroke equals red and then the stroke width 
is, uh, I don't know, um, nine. And now we get fatter and red uh, bar charts. Since we now have a group um, of all of our bars in this chart uh, group here, we can now transform or manipulate all of our bars uh, with uh, one command. And so there's an attribute called uh, transform that will let us manipulate uh, this element here. So using this, what we can do is we can do things like translate, uh, scaling, rotating, um, or skewing our, our element. So for instance, if we wanted to move everything within um, this group, we can say translate and we can supply some x, y coordinates. So we'll say move 20 and uh, then move 10 down here to move our bar chart around. Or maybe you think this bar chart's too big, so we can say scale, and we want to scale it down um, half to make it half the size. Or we can scale it up two to make it twice the size. Uh, I think that might be too big. So we'll go back down to half the size. Or maybe we don't like it in that direction and we want to rotate it, and so we'll say rotate negative 90 degrees. And let's move this down a little bit more so we can see it. In fact, let's just move it all the way to our bottom here. And now we get a, um, a bar chart that looks that way. Now, the last thing I want to show is how to animate SVGs. And there are a ton of ways to animate SVGs, either through CSS or JavaScript, or there's even these animate tags that you can use directly in your SVG. But really, animating SVGs is a whole other video. But, you know, let's just, let's just do a little bit of animation here. Uh, using some CSS. So let's go ahead and create a style tag here. Style. And in it, what we want to do is we want to create an animation uh, by specifying some keyframes. So we'll say keyframes, uh, and we'll call this animation grow. And so then we're going to say at 0%, uh, we want our transform, uh, if you remember that, the, the transform, we're going to say we want to scale in the x direction to start at zero here. And then at the end of the animation, or 100% of the animation, we want the scale to be at, um, at one. Um, so the, the scale will be the original size. So now that we have this animation here, we can apply it to, um, whoops, there's a little typo fix there. Um, but we have this animation grow, we can apply it to our path. So we could say path, and we could say animation, um, and then give it the, uh, the animation name. And we could say do it in five seconds. And so now as we save, you can see that our bar chart grows to the height 7B, and that's a little small, so let's make this a little bigger here so we can see it. So you can see that our animation starts at uh, zero in the X direction and it scales to its original size in the X direction uh, animating the bar chart. So hopefully after this video you feel really comfortable creating your own SVGs and, and drawing with them. It's it really is a lot of fun. Uh, I think everybody should uh, write SVGs by hand. Um, and if it has helped you then um, please share the video and um, maybe other people want to learn how to do this as well. Uh, yeah, and if you want to see more videos then uh, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.